Hi my friends, welcome or oh, welcome back to the Pages and Pearls YouTube channel. My name is Hannah, I am a knitter, writer, scientist uh, and on this channel I talk all about uh, mostly my knitting. So I'm here with another new podcast episode for all of you today talking about what I've been working on and what I'm currently working on knitting wise and yeah, it's the first one of 2024 so happy new year, happy new year. Um, grab your, I don't know, hot drink, get cozy and let's talk about some knitting. Alright, as I said, it's the first podcast of 2024. Um, very happy new year. I hope you got well into the new year. Uh, it's the 1st of February today, so January is finally over. It has felt like, I don't know, for me January felt like it's been going on for years, but that's always the case because it's just very dark here and not very sunny and yeah, it just makes it feel longer. But today is a pretty sunny day and my challenge for this podcast is actually to wrap it up before the light situation can change too much because the window is right there and if the sun moves a little bit further, I think I'm going to have a hard time filming this. Um, so let's just jump in and then after I catch you up on everything, maybe I will spend some time just chit-chatting about other things. But yeah, I want to update you on lots of finished objects, but a lot of those finished objects were actually gift nets over Christmas, so I don't have them here with me. I did manage to film a little bit uh, of each of the gift nets that I gave away, um, so I could insert some footage here. But yeah, they are all kind of small accessories that I finished up in the f yeah last few weeks leading up to Christmas. And I have one big finished object, which is the sweater and which is actually what I'm going to talk about first because that's probably what I'll spend most of my time on. So this is the Ingrid sweater by Petite Knit and this has been a long time in the making. I cast this on at the beginning of September. So this sweater was a mini knit along with my friend Madison who has her own YouTube channel over on Madison Monty's. And back when I was still living in New York, we decided to knit the sweater together and to cast it on together, celebrating the onset of pumpkin spice latte season. So that was on the 1st of September, which is obviously quite some time ago already. But I have very fond memories of picking out the yarn and then heading around the corner, finding a Starbucks, having our first pumpkin spice latte of the season and casting on the sweater together. That was very nice. And uh, I, yeah. I associate a lot uh, of memories with her for the sweater, even though we actually knit on it mostly when I already moved away. But we did have a few cast on, like cast on dates and knitting dates at the beginning before I moved. So that was very nice. Um, I am using Cascade 220 for this, not the superwash version, but just a regular non-superwash Peruvian Highland wool uh, in the shade Natural. Uh, this is... I. I see this listed as sometimes a DK weight yarn, sometimes a worsted yarn, sometimes even an Aran weight yarn. I feel like it adapts to many different um, yarn weights. It has a lot of yardage. It's quite dense uh, if you want, if you knit it at the gauge that I knit it, but still, um, yeah, not, not that it gets kind of like into a stiff fabric or anything. In fact, I really, really like this yarn and I definitely want to make more with it. I also love this color. It's just such a nice cream um, and I'm, I'm just obsessed with it. So the Ingrid sweater is a pattern by Petite Knit that, as you can see, I mean, I'll, I'll get up in a moment, but as you can see, it's made up of these different uh, panels that are separated by these eyelet rows. And what that means is that the whole yeah, knitting of the sweater is pretty engaging because whenever you finish one panel, there's a whole lot of other stitches to do for the next panel and it never gets really boring. So for me, it actually uh, went quite quick uh, knitting the yoke and just the body in general. But then because I moved and I put the sweater somewhere at the bottom of my suitcase and I didn't have access to it for a while and I didn't have lots of knitting time in autumn, it actually took me quite some time to then finally finish it. Um, but the time that I did spend knitting on it actually went by quite fast. The sweater is, so it has these kind of drop shoulders, but you do some short row shaping in the arms, which was a first for me. I really enjoyed that part actually. Um, I guess that makes the sections all line up kind of nicely. 
no no uh, yeah no it's pretty uh, a bit nicer and yeah as you can see the pattern is continued down the arms which is a little bit of a problem at some point or maybe that would be like my one problem that i had with the pattern i've seen this mentioned before on youtube and on different ravelry pages um which is that you're continuing with the pattern as you knit the arm as you knit the sleeve but you're also doing decreases and the decreases are kind of mentioned in one line but they're not really worked out super well for the sleeve so with most of the pattern it's not so noticeable like with um with this kind of like moss stitch seed stitch section it's very easy to hide a decrease but if you get to these kind of mock neck crisscross sections it gets a bit trickier um, and I kind of winged it as I went and it's fine. I'm I'm not um, too mad about how it turned out. I think the two sleeves actually turned out differently because I didn't really take a super strong note of what I was doing. Um, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, here you see, for example, in my case, it doesn't line up very well. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. I, that's, I think, also one of the reasons I wouldn't recommend this pattern to a very beginner knitter because it yeah you kind of can you can kind of get behind how to do decreases in this section somewhat well maybe not optimally but for that you might have yeah you might need a little bit of experience knitting um overall i'm very very happy with this sweater though and also with the fit of it as in terms of modifications what i did differently is that instead of the color that is suggested in the pattern which has I think a double rib section and then a single rib section and some eyelet in between. I just picked up and did a two by two rib collar because that's what I felt like and I didn't feel like having all this extra fabric up here. I just wanted a very simple, thin kind of collar. Um, and the other thing that I did, which is something that I started doing with this sweater, is that on the one by one rib uh, on the sleeve and also on the body, so down here, um, I knit one row as suggested by the pattern and then I did kind of like a German short row so I turned the work and then I knit the ribbing inside out until this last row and then turned around again knit the last row uh, like with the right side facing and then bound off and this way I feel like the ribbing got really crisp and nice because in my case and I think with many other people it's the same way your the my the back of my rib stitches always look much nicer in one by one rib than the front so that's why i decided to try out this uh knitting the ribbing inside out and i'm very happy with it and i think i'll be continuing with that um because it just makes the ribbing look much neater then in terms of other aspects of the sweater, I mean, I will also put details in the Ravelry page and the link to Ravelry down below. Um, in terms of how much yarn I used, I actually have quite some cascade yarn left. I think a ball and almost a second one. So I bought, I think, 700 grams for the sweater and I used around 500 maybe. But check the Ravelry page just for the correct details because I haven't weighed the sweater yet. That's it about this sweater. I have worn it out a few times yet. Um, it took quite a long time to block, but I feel like everything is taking ages to block here because it's a little bit humid. I mean, our place is not humid, but in general, the air is a little bit more humid, so things take longer to dry and it's pretty like cloudy or dark at the moment. I, so I also can't put anything in direct sunlight to make it dry faster. Um, I wore it a few times now and I really love how it is still a pretty thin, like not chunky sweater. I mean, it's still a DK weight sweater, but it is very warming. And I think the Peruvian Highland wool is combines those qualities of being a little bit lofty, but at the same time having a lot of warmth. So I'm, I'm, I mentioned this before. I think Peruvian Highland wool is my favorite base at the moment. And with this sweater, I still stand by it. Um, I really enjoy it a lot. In terms of how it feels on the skin, how it feels to knit with and and so on. But let's see how well this sweater holds up. Next up, I will be talking about the Christmas gifts that I finished. And again, because I don't have them here, I try and, I'm not gonna try to talk too much about them. 
but I mostly focused on finishing each one by one just in the lead up to Christmas and last autumn I was knitting a lot of things in parallel because I felt like casting on things didn't have a lot of time to knit so I just ended up knitting on many different works in progress and reducing this a little bit before Christmas and then really focusing on the Christmas gifts like one at a time reminded me that I think I am not... Um, yeah, I'm more of a somewhat monogamous knitter, maybe not completely monogamous, but I'm always, I always very much enjoy having one bigger project like a garment and then maybe a sock or a hat um, for on the go and not much more than that. So I've been trying to focus on this more again now because that's just the way that it works better for me. But now to the finished object. So I finished the Sunflower Field socks by Stone Knits. I showed one of those socks in my last episode. These are uh, colorwork socks that have this really pretty sunflower motif. And um, the pattern comes actually in a set. So you have two instructions, one where you only have the flower heads, like the petals, all over the sock, or you have one pattern where you have the full sunflower with a stem and the leaves just at the yeah, below the cuff. That's the one I knit. And I was able to basically make that out of yarn scraps that I had. Um, if you want to have a look at the colors, again, I will link you to my Ravelry page, but the main two colors that I used was my very favorite uh, friendly products variations in burnt amber for the cuff and the tip. So this kind of like dark orange and then the white background or off-white background was Cascade Heritage in limestone. And I knit these for a friend and I have the feeling that I'm getting slightly better at color work. So this was my second pair of color work socks, but I still need to figure out how to do the two handed color work knitting in a way that doesn't um, result in a huge gauge difference between the stitches of my left hand and in my right hand. So what I did for this sock is basically just knit with my right hand and kind of switch the colors which obviously takes a little bit more time, but since it was a gift, I also wanted to put some more effort into it. Um, ideally, at some point, I would like to learn how to do two-handed color, two color work with the um, tension working out well for both hands. The only mods that I did for these socks is that instead of the suggested cuff, I did one by one twisted rib, half twisted rib, sorry, because I knit a pair of socks with half twisted rib before and I really enjoyed how that looked like. The other thing that I knit was a Sophie scarf by Petite Knit. Um, this was another gift knit and I knit this in St. Magnus Orkney, Orkney Angora, which is an Angora wool blend in a DK weight yarn that I picked up in one of my local yarn shops. I've never knit with Angora before, so this was very fun to figure out. Um, and the colorway is chocolate. I really like this yarn because it has quite a lot of yardage for what it is. So I think it comes, it is a DK weight yarn um, thickness wise, but it comes in 200 meters per 50 grams. So it does give you quite a lot of yardage to knit with. I love the yarn. It's very fuzzy and very fluffy in a way. But when I blocked the garment, I feel like there maybe these are the Angora fibers that are kind of a little bit longer. They still ended up being a tiny bit scratchy. So the person I gave the gift knit to, they really loved the scarf, but they also said that it's a tiny, tiny bit itchy for, for the scarf, uh, for, the, um, for the throat or the neck, but still wearable. But I think that's something good for me also to keep in mind that maybe the next time I do like a small scarf, Sophie scarf or any other scarf, um, I might not pick that yarn again. But I do want to uh, try out maybe making a garment with that yarn because I very much enjoyed it. And there are great colors available as well. Uh, I also enjoyed knitting the Sophie scarf. It's quite quick, it's enjoyable, it's not as mindless because you do have to count between the rows. And because my yarn choice was a bit darker, it was sometimes hard to see where I had done increases or decreases before. So it took a bit more focusing and figuring out, but overall it was enjoyable. I've knit the Sophie scarf and the Sophie shawl now, and I definitely want to make a different shawl or scarf in the future. But I do think that the just knitting back and forth on an um, accessory item like this is not my favorite, favorite thing. Not saying that I won't do it again, but I feel like, yeah, what I love about accessories like hats or socks or so is something that hats and socks will give me, but not scarves. Um, I don't know if that made a lot of sense, but 
yeah just i don't think i'm gonna become a shawl knitter that knits a lot of shawls i also knit a hat which is kind of like a blend between a hipster and an oslo hat so both petite knit patterns and i mashed them up because i only had a limited quantity of yarn that wasn't enough for the oslo hat and because i wanted to have a two by two rib uh, brim but then switch to regular stockinette so that's why i owned both patterns before so i mixed them and i used the super pretty combination of uh, knitting for olive merino in nordic beach and soft silk mohair in powder in fact i have those still here so i can show you the combination of yarns that i used um it's this very nice kind of like grayish color and another grayish color i mean they are both i would say maybe a little bit more gray than beige leaning especially in the light right now but it's not like a typical clear cool gray so i really like this combination especially and um the hat turned out really nicely i really liked the the mashup of the two patterns and the person i gave the gift to was very happy about it as well and then the last thing that i knit for christmas that again i don't have with me are the mountain walk socks chunky by florence miller uh she has also a fingering weight like regular sock weight version for this pa pattern that i haven't made but the i wanted to try out dk weight socks also because they're a little bit quicker to knit um and because i've never made dk weight socks before i used west yorkshire spinners um fingering i think it's or four ply just their regular sock yarn uh, in the color nutmeg and didn't do any modifications I love the pattern because it has these mock cables. So it's kind, of not, it's kind of like a rib and then some of the rib columns have these mock cables that you don't need a cable needle for, um, but you just do something similar as here for these kind of like crisscross patterns on the Ingrid sweater. Uh, and it's fun uh, because you can just, yeah, merrily go along with your sock and then sometimes you put in these uh, kind of like overlays. I definitely want to make some of these socks for myself because they're super, super pretty. Uh, but I have two notes that I realized for myself. So one is that I love knitting my socks on shorties. All of my fingering weight socks, I knit them with these uh, short cables because I am not a huge fan of Magic Loop. And the DK weight socks, I tried knitting them on shorties. So I bought the 3 or 3.25 millimeter shorties. But for some reason, because the yarn weight is obviously a bit heavier i got really bad wrist pain when using the shorties for this especially because of this like mock cabling technique is also a little bit more than just a regular knit stitch um and it wasn't very pleasant so i did have to end up switching back to my regular cable needles uh, regular long like cord needles and do magic loop which in the end was fine it's not like it's a big pain to do magic loop but i just love knitting on shorties so much more. So that's why I'm actually wondering if there will be many DK weight socks in my future because for some reason shorties don't work for me with a DK weight. I don't know if you have similar experiences maybe when knitting DK weight socks or if anyways you're a magic loop sock person and then you don't have that problem obviously. But yeah, there was one thing and then the other thing was that I used a fingering weight yarn held double um, to knit a size 38 European size and the 100 gram ball that I had was just about enough. Um, I had just like one or two grams left over but just keep in mind if your shoe size is a little bit larger you might need more than 100 grams. Yeah those are those are my thoughts on the mountain walk chocks, socks chunky well this is hard to pronounce but as I said I want to make a pair for myself uh, but at the moment I am more in the fingering weight sock mojo. So those are all the finished objects. Um, I hope that wasn't too quick, but I also didn't want to spend so much time on something that I cannot physically show you here, right? Uh, I overall actually really enjoyed my gift knitting this year. I was pressed for time uh, with one or two of these, but because I was on holiday, I actually did manage to finish them uh, quite well. And as I said, I really enjoyed spending 
a lot of time on one project in kind of like a compressed period of time and really getting into the project and getting into the feel of the yarn and so on. So that's something that I want to carry with me now um, going on. Yeah, just knitting for myself as well with my works in progress and not casting on too many things in parallel. All right, let's move to my whips. Um, I showed you this combination of the Nordic beach and powder um, by Knitting for Olive because I picked this up for the gift knit to see if I liked the color combination and then I did. So I picked this up for a garment for myself that I'm currently working on. This is a mini knit along again, this time with handmade, no, Sarah's hand makes. Um, she already finished hers, I'm a bit slower. <laughs> but. I think I'm at a really bad stage to show you this actually because I just picked up for the color. But this is the um, Friday Slipover V-neck by Petite Knit. And I it is a V-neck vest in broken rib stitch. And I have so far knit a big part of the body joined in the round, knit the ribbing on the armholes and just picked up the stitches to knit the v-neck lining finishing whatever um the yeah before when i'm done with the v-neck i will go back to the body and continue knitting um and then deciding on the length i really feel like slipovers for me i i've only made one before but with that one i was really cautious with figuring out the length because I really didn't want to have it too long or too short and because the um, finishing on the neck and on the armholes kind of pulls the garment up a little bit again I wanted to finish these first before deciding on the length. So far um, this this project is quite interesting so I love the how the colors work out together I'm gonna hold it a bit closer here sorry now the needles are bumping against the, where I have the microphone propped up. So this is the, the sweater and you can see the sun coming around. So let's see <laughs> how this will go. This is the what the fabric looks like and I'm very much in love with it, both how the colors mull together, but also the way the broken rib stitch looks like. I find it such a, I don't know, such an interesting texture. Um, and I'm definitely, definitely in love with the broken rib texture. While knitting, I was cursing myself a few times though, because if there is one type of stitch pattern that I don't enjoy, it's one by one rib. I, I don't know, two by two rib is fine, one by one rib. I think it's just about kind of like switching the yarn from front to back the whole time, like every stitch that I find a bit annoying and a bit tough on the wrists as well. So as I was making my slow progress through this piece, I was like, why Why did I choose something that has one by one rib every other row? But I have to say, I actually made my piece with it. Um, somehow, I don't mind so much anymore. I don't know, it just at some point after I joined in the round, I realized that actually it was fine. I don't dislike it as much anymore. And in a similar vein, I also didn't dislike picking up stitches for the arms, I I would usually, I would have always said the things that I like the least are one by one rib and picking up stitches. And with this piece, for, somehow, for some reason, the picking up the stitches was fine. Maybe it's because I'm getting better at it. Maybe it's because I had made the experience of my opinion about one by one rib shifting and I didn't tell myself how much I disliked picking up stitches as I was doing it. Maybe that had some influence, but in any case, I actually I actually enjoyed it and I think this whole piece is very interesting because it's just yeah I'm just focusing on this one as I go not telling myself the things I don't like but just going with whatever the pattern tells me to do and just doing it and meanwhile I get to feel this luxurious gorgeous combination of silk mohair and merino and I don't know. I just really like it. Uh, what else? What else is there to say? Um, V-necks. Another thing. I think uh, my cumulus blouse converted me a little bit to try out more V-necks. So this is also 
uh, something that this pattern will fulfill. The last thing I have to say is that I went up a needle size because I'm getting the feeling that Petite Knit um, knit a little bit looser than me and going up one needle size usually tends to be good, a good choice for me. Of course, whatever yarn I use and so on will also play into this. Um, I'm not sure how my gauge will turn out in the end. I did a gauge swatch, but with then deciding to go up a needle size, it might be that when I block it, it blocks out a tiny bit too large, but I'm not sure, we will see. So far the fit is pretty good. I will obviously show you how, what it looks like finished in my next episode, um, but yeah, for now, what I can say is that I'm really enjoying this process and I'm also really enjoying knitting this together with someone else at the same time again, so that we can exchange thoughts and yeah, maybe some issues that we have with the pattern, which in this case is not really the case, but just yeah, figuring out if we want to go up a needle size or not. It's just a lot of fun, so I would recommend. And I really look forward to have this in my wardrobe. Then other works in progress. I had my one on the go project in the meantime, which was a bit of a bad choice for an on the go project. So this one is half finished. It's a sock. This is the sock from the, um, the snippet sock from the 52 weeks of socks volume one book. I got this book for Christmas. I asked for it and I am, um, yeah, this is the first pattern that I knit from it. And I really love having a physical book there with all of these pretty pictures and all of these different lace and cable and everything socks. Um, and the pattern that I chose is, has this really cool lace motif on the front, which the sock is not blocked. So I think it'll turn out even prettier once I block it. And this motif is basically the reason that it wasn't the best on the go project because I had to snap a picture of the chart and then kind of zoom in weirdly on it whenever I was sitting on the train and it would have just been easier to knit this part at home. Um, I think I knit the last part of the second triangle at home and I realized that I should, yeah, it's, it's an on the go project as soon as you reach the end of this main uh, lace panel. But I'm very much in love with it. Then yeah, on the top of the foot, again, a bit hard to show off because it's not blocked yet. But on the top of the foot, you have these small, you have this small motif as well. Does it show now? Yeah, there we go. That I think honestly looks more complicated than it actually is to do it. And I love the effect of it. And you have it here on this other side as well. Um, I can't wait to block this sock. <laughs> and well, obviously I still have a second one to go. Uh, the yarn that I used for this is this Rico, I think it's Rico Superba 4-ply Tweet. Um, it's this extremely pretty pink, kind of like dusty pink with colorful speckles in it. I fell in love with this yarn when I was at the yarn shop and I knew that I wanted to have kind of like a simple lace or cable pattern with it. You can see here some of the speckles also like... Let's see, with the light it's getting a bit tricky. You can see it. Um, basically you have these extremely pretty little specks of tweed in there in different colors. And I just love, it made me so happy to knit on this sock and see all of these different parts come up. Um, and I can't wait to knit my second sock. However, I'm currently working on a different sock. So the second one of this one has to wait. And that's my last work in progress that I can share with you which is a test knit. And this test knit is for Vert Knit, uh, who is Ines Oliveira, I think, um, on Instagram. Uh, and this is the Citrine sock. So there's a Citrine pullover that is coming out soon. And she also has a sock pattern. And when I saw it, I really knew I had to make it because it has these very pretty cables <laughs> on the cuff. Um, and this sock pattern also has a lot of new techniques for me in a way. So it has a bit of cabling involved. It has some kind of like mock rib um, pattern that I haven't done before. And it has 
a short row heel like I don't know what the heel construction is called but I'm used to do a heel flap and gusset with my socks so this is a new construction for me that I definitely really wanted to try out this morning I knit the heel um, I will have to redo it but the heel technique is a lot of fun I really enjoyed it and I'm not too mad at having to redo it again um, the reason that I have to redo it is that within this test knit I feel like I've had some fit issues that we are kind of trying to figure out so it's very interesting this is I think the first test knit where I'm actually much more actively involved than just I don't know maybe highlighting a typo or then in the end sending my like feedback form and my finished object pictures because I don't know if it's if I'm more picky with the fit of socks but I think also maybe socks are sometimes just trickier to find a proper f fit with because they rely so much on the shaping on, on the negative ease and it's not like a sweater that if it's oversized maybe by I don't know 15 20 centimeters you don't see so much um, fit issues anyways but yeah, with the sock, uh, I find it much more tricky. So basically, I'm, I realized that I think my foot circumference and leg circumference at the cuff is a bit narrower for what my shoe size would be. And also this pattern, basically, maybe I should start this way. So the pattern is not um, described in terms of how many stitches to cast on for your cuff as some like vanilla sock patterns are. Obviously it has you measure the cuff and your foot, foot measurements, but it has specific measurements for like size 35 to 36, um, size 37, 38, European size and so on. And I am a shoe size 38, so I cast on for that uh, because I thought the measurements also fit quite well with my, yeah, with what I measured, but then realized that the cuff was much, much too large um, and the the sock was just slouching down my leg basically so I opted for the smaller size uh, but now I realized that then the kind of instep circumference is much too small so yeah now we're trying to figure out what to do about that um, again this is a test knit so it's kind of to be expected that it's not all smooth sailing and I again I also didn't sign up for a test knit expecting smooth sailing I actually kind of enjoy or find it very interesting to figure out these kind of small issues along the way and help the designer try to make a pattern that is uh, helpful in terms of fit for everyone um, but I do feel a bit bad sometimes kind of like the I don't know I feel a bit like the party pooper of the test knit um, because all of these techniques are super enjoyable right I'm, I'm really I really love the cables I love how they look like um, the this sort of like rib section is super enjoyable the short rows in the heel were a lot of fun so I'm enjoying the pattern it's just that uh, I had to redo the cuff once now probably I'll have to redo part of the leg and definitely the heel uh, again as well so let's see how this goes I'm, I'm gonna focus on this sock before I either cast on the second sock uh, so the test it only requires you to finish one of the socks or before I cast on maybe the second sock of my of the pink like the this one that I showed you before let's see oh these look nice together actually hmm I will have leftovers of both so maybe I can do like a stripey something I like it hmm Nice, okay, <laughs> anyways, these are all my works in progress. Um, as I said, I don't wanna have too many in parallel, so at the moment I just have the slip over and one of the socks. And then whenever I'm done with one of the socks, I will cast on the other one. Um, that's it in terms of works in progress. I will talk a little bit about acquisitions because it was Christmas, I got uh, gifts, I traveled to Germany and I got a little bit crazy in the sock yarn section because there were so many commercial sock yarns in Germany that I just want to try out. So bear that in mind. I also recently got these boxes to uh, store my yarn. This is now all just piled up. Um, there is actually space below, but I got these boxes um, to store my yarn because before I had them in this giant vacuum bag that was just standing in a corner of the room that was annoying um, and I have two of these boxes that house all my stash and seeing those two boxes basically full um, 
yeah, made me realize that I don't want to have more than that. So I think it's nice to have this very specific limited space that I'm not going to put other restrictions on myself other than what I have in terms of yarn needs to fit in there. So if something comes out, I'm allowed to put more things in. I don't know. Um, yeah. Anyways, I picked up more tweed yarn in blue. It's the same one as I showed you before. So this is the Rico Design Superba Tweed for ply. It's a wool polyamide viscose mix. And this one is a little bit different from the other one in that it is a this nice dark blue. But again, colorful specks of tweed. I'm planning to make socks with these uh, with this yarn for my partner. I also got this very pretty shuffle volet sauber ball for Christmas. It's a color um, fate or self striping yarn. I mean, I think the sections are chunkier than in some self striping yarns. Um, this is the colorway Bunte Gasse. Um, and it has these oh, light situation again. And I want to make pressed flower socks with these. So I picked up this Filcolana Arvetta in a very pretty, yeah, okay, if I hold it here, it's better. A uh, very pretty dark, kind of like olive green. This is the colorway 147. And I think these ones together as the pressed flower socks will be very pretty. Very curious about trying those socks. More sock yarns. These are so pretty. These are the Wool Addicts uh, footprints. I saw this one before on Mona, so Ghost Puff over here on YouTube on her channel, uh, that she used this as sock yarn, or maybe it was on her Instagram. So I was, yeah, on the hunt for this yarn because I loved all of this, like, kind of color changing two strands and the color combination with the soft kind of like lilac purple tones, some yellows and some greens. And when I found this in a yarn shop, I also saw this one and I love this kind of more autumn coated version of the whole yarn with definitely more like saturated oranges and all tones of greens and browns. So I picked up these two for some Probably just for some easy kind of like vanilla socks with a contrast cuff and toe because after all the cabling and uh, lace and other socks that I'm knitting at the moment I definitely will feel like um, having just a vanilla sock, maybe a rib or something in between. So that's that's some more from my sock craze. And then yeah, the, the other two sock yarns that I are in my works and projects were also part of this sock uh, yarn, commercial sock yarn pickup craze. Uh, my parents gifted me a sweater quantity of yarn that I got to pick out uh, at our local yarn shop back home. Um, well, we have several local yarn shops, but the one that I love the most is Wollen, which is a yarn shop in Berlin that has lots of really good uh, yarns and very very friendly stuff and I went there one day with my parents and we picked out a very vibrant color. Uh, this is the um, Sonnes Garn Sunday which I've never knit before. I don't think I've ever knit with Sonnes Garn so I wanted to try it out and this is Filcolana Telia in Mohair. The color, let me see if I can show it to you a bit better, is this extremely like hot raspberry pink. Um, the colors, these only have color codes, so this is the 4600 and this is 360 of the Filcolana. I saw, I think there was a sweater that held this one double in the shop or a cardigan that I really liked, um, but I wanted not a pure mohair uh, garment. So I found this very fitting um, merino to hold with it. And I want to make the Colette pullover by Sari Nordland with this. Um, this might be my next cast on. I'm not sure yet if after the one by one rib vest, I will feel like a cable pattern, cable, eyelet, kind of more intricate pattern, or if I just want to go for a 
easy kind of stock in that sweater. Uh, I do have some yarn and stash that I could use for that. So either of these two will probably be my next cast on. Um, and I'm just extremely in love with this color. I don't own anything in this color in my wardrobe, but I really like this hot pink magenta kind of color. It turns out more red, I think, on camera. Let's see. This is... It's not red. It's pink. Like, I don't know. Um, if <laughs> if I can find a way of showing this better. If not, um, you just have to wait and see until I knit it. And then hopefully I will have a more overcast day, which is not tricky to get in the UK, uh, to film it and to uh, capture the color a bit more appropriately. And then last in terms of acquisitions was a very, very unexpected and very kind and beautiful surprise from my friend Chelsea over on True Lane Knits, who gifted me this bouquet of minis. Um, this was in the mail when I came back from home uh, after New Year's. This is the Sorella yarn and I think it's their mini... So they, they have these... Uh, seasonal tonals in the shop and this is the mini bundle of um, nylon sock set so it's 80% superwash merino 20% nylon and this is the um, I forgot what the, I think the whole set was called reading nook I remember that we talked about this and how perfect the name of the set was and how perfect all of these colors were um, I think it is, yeah, it is the reading nook. It says it here. I was like, was it the reading nook? Yes. So you can see that these colors, are, they all, I, I'm just, if, I would just put them in a vase and, and put it in my room somewhere. So let's see how we do this without uh, having the light catch it too much. So we have this very pretty purple, this kind of like golden brownie orange. Uh, more like a sage, slightly darker than sage green. Very pretty soft pink cream color. And then more like a um, lavender purple. So all of these together are so pretty. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do yet with these. Uh, I could always make a sock, of course, but at the moment I have my eyes on different sweaters that incorporate small stripes into the yoke so that I could maybe use these as really cool stripes um, and then find a color that would match well with all of these. Um, if I go for a lighter color I might take this one out because then it would be a too low contrast but I do like um, the idea of finding something in a similar color to this and then having these ones to stripe. Or alternatively, I might also manage with kind of like a navy, like a really dark blue. Um, that could also work for having these stand out, but I'm not sure if that's what I'm going for. Anyways, thank you so much. This one was a very, very good surprise. Um, and I think that's it in terms of new acquisitions. I wanted to also share a few recommendations. Um, didn't do that last time, wanted to do it this time. First recommendation. Is this book. This is called Wintering by Catherine May. I read this over Christmas. Uh, took my time to read it. I think it's so it's a non-fiction book. It benefits from taking your time with it and is essentially a kind of meditation of the author on the darker months and how our moods shift with them and what winter is good for. And I think this was very, very helpful for me to read because I always notice my mood and my energy levels dip whenever um, the darker season rolls around. And this book was just nice to read, to see, I don't know, shared experience, to have someone there kind of telling you that it's okay, that there are just some slower seasons. And she has a very nice way of writing and it's just comforting. I, I really liked it. Um, I feel like it's marked or it's marketed maybe more as a self-help book in terms of the power of rest and retreat in difficult times. You have an Elizabeth Gilbert uh, blurb here. It's nice. It's, I think, if you like just thinking about slowing down, if you like some nature writing, this one will be for you. And I definitely recommend it. So it starts off... I think in 
October or end of September and then progresses through November, December and so on. And on the way, she talks a little bit about how, um, for example, more like uh, Northern European cultures deal with the very heavy winters they get. And it's a nice mix of many things that is a bit hard to describe, but very much recommend. Um, and if you've read this before, I would be curious to hear what you think. That is recommendation number one. Um, recommendation number two is a series that I've been watching uh, that is The Tourist on the BBC. I've only watched the first season so far, uh, but I really enjoyed it. It's this kind of thriller that is not scary, so perfect for me because I, I like suspense, but I don't like gory, graphic or scary things. So that's always a very, very fine line to walk with any kind of like crime or thriller series. And I feel like The Tourist does that quite well. Um, added bonus is that Jamie Dornan is in it and um, lots of... It's set in Australia, so lots of Australian actors. So you have a wild blend of English accents that is kind of like a crash course <laughs> in trying to understand them all as a non-native English speaker. Um, and I enjoyed it. It's not... I th Yeah, it it's suspenseful. It has some humor in it. I really like the series. And I know that there's a second season that I still have to watch, but I wanted to take a bit of a short break after watching the first one. And I would say that's that. Only two recommendations so far today. But that's all I have to talk about. Last thing that I can talk about is um, my writing. And there are some, for me at least, exciting progress happening there. As in, I'm almost done with my last revisions on it. I'm doing... Uh, so if you're new here, maybe I should give you a little bit more context. I'm currently writing... A book, um, a rom com that is about a scientist, and it's this summer romance set in New York in a very nerdy context. And I started it almost two years ago and have been editing it in the last year. And I'm planning to try to figure out if I can publish it somehow. And in that um, procedure, I have been. Um, I, have, I applied last year for a mentorship program where you get help from young authors in editing and getting your materials up to speed for uh, submission to agents. And I gained a spot on that mentorship program and I've, working, I've been working with my mentor in the last months on revising my manuscript and making sure that the storyline is where it could be and should be and so on. And at the moment, I'm really doing like one of the last read throughs that I was planning to do to see if I catch any last typos or sentences that I want to shift just a little bit. And it's so cool to see how close the story is now to what it is in my head. In some aspects, it's even better. Like sometimes I read parts where I'm like, oh, right, you wrote this. Like, this was fun. I don't know. It, Maybe it sounds self-centered, I don't know, but it's really like, I was, I I read on some or heard on some podcasts in the very beginning when I started writing it that you should mostly write for your reader self, like really think about what you would as a reader like. And because I'm a big reader and I've always been, I feel like that was something that was extremely important to me too, because I really wanted to write the book that I would have liked to find in the bookshop. And in the beginning, obviously, the language was bad. Like, when you're trying to figure out the story there, I don't know, in my case, there are so many issues obviously going on. So it's just a huge disappointment when you see your words on the page and you're like, well, but in my head, it's, it's so good, right? And now, after all this time, on the page is, is good. Like, at least for me personally, I read it and I'm like, yep, that's actually what I was going for. So I'm extremely satisfied with this now. Um, and I'm trying to cherish and celebrate that feeling because I know that the next steps in terms of trying to find an agent who would maybe represent me and so on, those are, uh, yeah, just huge kind of like bottlenecks where a lot of people don't get representation. The book doesn't get sold. There are so many kind of like hurdles on the way that I don't have a lot of control over, that I'm trying to take the most with me from this phase where the manuscript is mine and shared with a few people that helped me uh, improve it. And 
just, yeah, realized that this is everything I had control over and I actually got it to a point where I love it. And from now on, it's it's bonus, right? I don't know. Obviously, I'm hoping for the best. Um, fingers crossed for everything. I will keep you updated here. But yeah, there's just things that we don't have control over. And I think that's something good to to realize and will hopefully protect my mental health a little bit as I push myself and my book into this uncertain zone of evaluation from outsiders and so on. Yeah, that's about it. Um, I'm gonna wrap up here. The light has shifted already. Uh, I need to get back to work and um, yeah, let me know below if you've worked anything on anything as you were watching and how you're doing and what's going on in your life, what projects you're excited about. Maybe books that you've recently read that you enjoyed or would be curious to hear about any of those. I always love chatting with you in the comments and feel free to also like the video, subscribe if you haven't yet and I hope the next video won't uh, be as long as it was now between this podcast episode and the last podcast episode. And until then, have a very, very good rest of your day, very good time, very much joy with your whatever you're working on and see you soon in another episode. Bye. -bye.